Hello guys, this is Vivek and this is the 21st tutorial of this Linux tutorial series. So in the last tutorial, we saw how we can install packages using apt-get command on a Ubuntu operating system. We also spoke that we will be slowly migrating to Red Hat. Uh, this will be beneficial for the people who are planning to learn Red Hat or server management system. So uh, the syntax and the concept more or less remains the same. Sometimes there would be differences that I will be keep explaining side by side on Ubuntu and Red Hat. So in this tutorial, we are going to learn about YUM. YUM is an acronym. The full form is a little funny. It's Yellow Dog Updater Modified. It is an open source command line as well as graphical based package management tool for RPM, that is Red Hat Package Manager, based operating Linux systems. So it allows users and system administrator to easily install or update or remove or search software packages on a system. So uh, for using yum uh, first we need to have a repository what we call basically it's a collection of or it's a place where we will look for the packages so uh, while practicing red hat uh, you might need to setting you might need to learn setting up a local repository because if you're going for a subscription the free subscription is one month only and a, a paid subscription i don't want you to go right now so let's create a lo local repository from where we will be fetching the softwares and downloading it so it's pretty simple uh, for that we definitely need a software a small software that uh, that is named as everything uh, we will be using everything as a local http server so you can search for download everything so this is a tool download uh, or you can download from here also. Let's see. This is a very small tool. It won't take much time. You can either download installer or a portable zip file. It looks like this. Once you start it, go to tools and start HTTP server. Now, let's, let's show what happens when you type 192 dot or we'll type localhost. So this is showing everything on my local system. All right. So it's it's a local server which got started. So next step would be making a repository on this Linux system. So let's start the system. So the very first command I will use that I will try to elevate my access typing su. So we will go. So we will go to directory cd slash etc slash yum dot repose dot d directory. Here is the place where we will be creating our own repository. So let's create our new repository with the name vim. So vim is a command line editor. Uh, that I typically use you can also use text editor here But I'll still recommend using VI editor because on a real scenario you will end up using VI or VIM editor or nano editor uh, For editing the text files on a real server where you have only SSH access. So let's give this name as wake dot rep or repository wake dot repo cool now this is something uh, if you don't know you might find it little inconvenient but I'll guide you how to type here and how to insert st stuff here. So the very first time when you in open any file or create a file using VI editor you'll see a window like this. Now a few things we need to enter, make an entry here for that is uh, first I will type I that will start inserting whatever we will type. So now it says it's in insert mode. We will type name of the repository in square bracket. Right left cursor keys move um, uh, moves as it should be. We will type server. Right we will hit enter. We will also type name as server. 
then we will type base URL. This is the repository base URL. Here we'll type the link where all the repository exists. Now we we have just started this small HTTP server. Using that we can access the base operating system. This is why we have installed this uh, small HTTP server on the base operating system. We need to find out what the IP address of my base operating system is. We'll go. We'll start command prompt and we'll type IP config. All right. So this is the IP address of my system 192.168.1.4. And on my local system, I have the disk image placed here. Computer, Max, Disk Images, RHEL7. This is the path. And here is the ISO file. I have extracted it using WinRAR. This is a small free tool. It's a, basically, it's, it's having a trial version, but it also lets you use it even the trial version gets expired. So download and install it WinRAR. Right click on this file, extract it to a, to a particular directory. Like I have done that here, RHEL. So remember this particular path. Now in the browser, we will type the same path to open this file. We'll go in the browser. We can type 192.168.1.4. That is my base operating system, and then it's in G drive. So we copy pasted the base path here. So all we need to do is just type. 192.168.1.4 now it will be black backslash g drive drive it changes to percentage 3a so we'll type percentage 3a now a now it's a backslash again now disk images again it's a backslash now rhel it's a backslash and here we go it will show you everything here cool now all the extracted data from iso is here we just copy this particular path we'll go to our linux in the base url we'll do right click paste got pasted done in the next line we will make sure that this repository is enabled so we'll type enabled is equal to one now there is a, a small security mechanism for a repository where we check for gpg key so those that feature we don't want here let's not talk about it we'll just write gpg check is equal to zero now this is what we need now how to save this file press escape key once if you hit escape key you will see that from insert mode it will go to command mode now hit colon We'll hit colon and then WQ and enter. That's how we saved and exited the VI editor. Now let's see whether our file was created or not. Okay, we got a file called vivek.repo created. Now let's make use of that repository. Now we have set everything. Yum is pre installed on the system. We have started a server local server on the base operating system using everything tool we have the path configure on the repository now we will start using it to use that so very first time we are doing that we will need to clean our repository list uh, if it's cached here we'll type yum clean all all right it says everything got cleaned up now we want to see what, how many packages are, are there in my repository so repository exists here uh, repo data we have a lot of packages right so uh, let's type yum repo list okay it went to the server and we saw that we have 4305 packages now only one disadvantage of using this technique is that you don't get updated packages because the disk image that we have was once downloaded and, and there is no regular update to those packages so for learning purpose this is well and good but if you are in actual production environment you need to have different repository list or repo list 
so let's proceed and let's see what all we what all things you can do here so for installing software it's again very similar to what we did in linux uh, ubuntu linux here we'll type yum install and the package name httpd suppose will see it will see the dependency as well and it will ask us whether we want to proceed with the installation or not if you press yes it will proceed with the installation if no it will stop there now uh, this is just for showing you I don't I'm not going to install this package here I will just hit N and it does that what if you want to remove something from this operating system suppose uh, we will install a small tool called yum install open ssl it's already installed what if you want to remove it we'll type yum remove open ssl and when we hit enter it will show all the listed packages and it will also ask uh, us whether we want to proceed or not so we don't want to proceed I was just trying to show you that what else we can do with this thing so again uh, this is not all about it <laughs> if you want to learn everything about yum type yum minus minus help it will get all the possible features here what else you can do here so Again, I'll say go and play around with this command. You can also do certain things, interesting things with uh, yum. You can list the packages and inside a, a package name. Like I'll type yum list and httpd. This is the Apache server. So, okay, this contains a server. Its name is x httpd x86 and also 64 because we are running 64 bit operating system the compatible package is being shown here now what if you want to search whether a particular package is present here or not so you can do yum search and the package name is httpd here we go whatever packages which httpd name is there you can get the list out of it if you want to get information out of certain of certain package you can always type yum info and then package name httpd you got the package details here so if you want to check some details before installation this is a good way to do that now list all the packages if you want to see list of all the packages in this uh, repository you can just type yum list and i'll type more because it has got a lot and lot of uh, op uh, repositories or packages inside this repositories so here you go there are 4000 plus packages so i'll just hit control c i don't want to proceed now what all packages are installed if you want to see so you can just type yum list install it's pretty simple right again we'll type more because it can scroll we will slowly see okay these are, if you want to see any particular package is installed or not you can always type grep est or open ssl it will show you if it's installed or not yes it is installed so again mixing various command you can get the desired output what if whatever you want to all right so don't stop here go ahead practice on your own system and feel free to ask questions if you have any in the comment section thank you so much for guys for watching this tutorial see you next tutorial with something different and interesting